Welcome to this tutorial on basic mixing. Today I'm going to show you how to set up your project so you can start mixing your music. First I want to explain why we have to mix music. As an example I'm going to use a track that was recorded by a jazz quartet consisting of trumpet, piano, cello and drums. In this tutorial I will be using Cubase but everything we will go through applies to all the other digital audio workstations as well. So I've made two mix downs of the song. The red track is the unmixed version and the green track is the mixed version. We're gonna have a listen to the unmixed version of the song first. <laughs> Alright, and now the mixed version. So what we can hear in the unmixed version is that there is basically no room. The volume balance is not very good and the sound overall is very flat. The mixed version however has an actual stereo image so you can hear where the instruments are coming from. Uh, volume is balanced now and the instruments sound natural. And that is basically why we have to mix music. When we go to the studio we're gonna use microphones that give us a mono signal. That signal takes away the room and a little bit of the audio quality of the instruments is lost. So while mixing we can bring back the room and we can restore the audio quality. So to get started, we're going to have a look at how to import tracks into Cubase. It is very important that the sample rate and bit depth of our workstation matches the sample rate and bit depth of our recording. The standard for audio CDs is 44,100 Hz and 16 bit. Our recording, however, is in 48,000 Hz and 24 bit. So we need to change that because Cubase is set to the CD standard and we're going to go to Project and then select project setup and here we can change the sample rate and bit depth of Cubase. That is very important because if we don't do that our audio playback won't work properly, the pitch will be messed up and the tempo as well. And next we're gonna go to file, import, audio files and here we see all our audio files that we need for this project. And now Cubis is asking us if we want the files on one track or different tracks. We're going to select different tracks because we want the files to be underneath each other, the tracks to be underneath each other, so we can start mixing. These are all the audio files we have in our project now. These are all the different instruments. And um, what we're going to do next is we're going to rename them to organize it a little better, to see where which instrument is right away. So I'm going to rename them real quick. Now I have renamed them. Each track has uh, the proper name now, so I can see where which instrument is. I also have color coded them, like you see here. You can do this in any audio workstation basically. And that helps to get a little bit better of an organization into your project, so you can see which instrument is which right away. We have two tracks for the trumpet, two tracks for the piano, two tracks for the cello, and four tracks for the drums right here. And I can see that because of the color code and the names in the description of the track. Now we can go ahead and listen to what we got. So I just played a small section of the song, but what you should do is familiarize yourself with the music, with the song, listen to it over and over again to get an idea of what the song is about and what you want to do with it. Then you can start mixing. With F3 you bring up the mixing panel in Cubase. Here we can see all our tracks, the volume faders and the panning faders over the volume faders. On the right side hand we have the stereo output, which is the channel for our master volume. In Cubase we have the ability to link all these channels that I'm clicking here. You can 
hold shift and then basically select all of them at once like so and then right click select link channels and then they all will be controlled with one volume fader this is very useful because now we can bring down the volume of all the tracks at once and we're going to bring them down to around minus 8 to minus 6 uh, db which gives us a little more headroom so we can turn up certain tracks or individual tracks without uh, going over 0 db on the master output to get better control over the instruments in our project we're going to right click on a track then go to audio tracks and there we can select different options what we want to choose is add group channel track and because we have four instruments we're going to go ahead and add four group channel tracks so now we can rename them after the instruments that we have in this project now that we have created the group tracks we can go to an individual track here we are on the track that the trumpet is on and we see the input and the output right here we're gonna select the output and then we're gonna go to group and trumpet so we're sending the signal there Now we're going to do the same for all the other instruments in our project. As you can see, I'm sending the piano to the piano group track, the cello to the cello group track right here, and then we have the drums. I'm going to send them to the drum group track. We can control multiple tracks at once now and this comes in really handy. Now we have turned everything down but the piano and we're gonna have a look at the uh, panning faders now. These right here. And we can send a signal more to the left or to the right of our speakers. Let's listen to how that sounds. Just by panning the piano, we have given the instrument more room. Now we have to do the same thing for all the other instruments in the project. And this way you can create a basic mix of your own music or the project you're mixing right now. <laughs> 